Yeah, we'll do this. Go with me to Acts chapter 3. <coughs> now, I love Acts chapter 3 because as we were saying before, um, <laughs> I love killing the sacred cows, the traditions of men, the things that keep people in bondage because that's what, that's what they do. They, they, they would rather people stay in bondage rather than change and accept the word of God. So Acts chapter 3 kills so many of these traditions. I mean, just wipes them out. So we're going to look at this real quick. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Now, alms is money. He was looking for an offering. And being in front of the temple is a good place to get an offering. Why? Because people are feeling gener generous when they go to the temple. And there's a lot of people going in, and they want people to see them give. So that's a great place to be. He was smart, but apparently he didn't make enough money because he was still sitting there begging, right? So, but he says here, and watch, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Now, if you listen carefully to what I'm saying, here, here's what I love about the Bible. You don't need notes. All you got to do is read it. Everything's there. If you remember this, if you just see the direction this goes, it's amazing. You can turn right around and tell the same story to anybody else. And all you need is your Bible, if you even need the Bible. Maybe you know the whole book or the whole uh, chapter 3 of Acts. Maybe you do. That'd be great. But he says here, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask and alms. So what was he wanting? Money, right? He did not say, oh, you're Peter. You were Jesus. Heal me. He didn't say that, did he? He was not expecting healing. Is that, can we agree with that? He was expecting money, right? Now, now watch this. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Can you believe that? Right out of the bat, Peter's already made a mistake. Why? Because we all know better. See, our, our modern theology, we're smart enough to know better than to tell somebody to look at us. What do we say? Look to Jesus. But isn't it funny? Because our modern technology, our modern theology, uh, doesn't get people healed, but Peter's did. Might want to remember that. All right? So here he says, now watch. <clears throat> he says, look on us. Now watch. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Yeah, money. Now, verse 6. Then Peter said, now here, here's where we want to get to. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Now, that right there proves he was Pentecostal. <laughs> <coughs> so, he says here, and, and actually if you check, uh, just a couple of days later, he couldn't even say that. Why? Because they brought silver and gold and actually laid it at his feet. So, but here he said, now watch this. Watch what Peter says. Silver and gold have I none. So now Peter's already made a bad confession. So he just keeps messing up one after another. Isn't that right? Then he says, and I love this part, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. Now get this. Peter knew he had something. Now get this. He not only knew he had something, he knew he had something he could give. Now think about that. He didn't, now watch what Peter, see, we know what Peter should have done. Why? Because in our enlightened theology, we know what to do. So what, what, what should Peter have done? He should have said, sir, look to Jesus, and right now we're going to pray and see what God will do. That's what everybody does. Let's just pray and see what God wants to do, and let's just pray and see what God will do, right? But notice, that's not what Peter said. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have, I give you. And then the next, watch this, in the next um, <laughs> breath, we could say, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, notice here, no prayer. He didn't pray. Now, okay, look, just so you know, where were they going whenever he stopped them? To the temple to pray. So Peter was not prayed up. Did you get that? He, went, he wasn't all prayed up. He didn't go pray up first and then come out and heal this man. He was going to pray. 
and he healed a man on the way. Why? Because he knew what he had. He knew he didn't have to go in the temple and get it. He didn't say, wait here, I'm going to go pray, and I'll be back. He didn't say that. He said, what I got, I give you. I got something, and I can give it away. See, that's what we got to get a hold of. Such as I have, give I unto thee. That's, that's the, the point I want to get a hold of. Now, watch, because he goes on. And when he says this, he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, notice, again, no prayer. That is called an imperative. An imperative is a fancy word that means command. It was a command. Notice he didn't say, sir, what would you like to do? Would you like to get up? Would you like to walk? How, what do you think about that? How do you feel about that? Sir, do you have enough faith? Because if you have enough faith, I can get you up. He didn't say that. He said, what I got, I give you in the name. What did he have? He had the name. What name? The name above all names. The name that every other thing that has a name has to bow its knee to. Lameness had to bow its knee to the name. He said, what I got, I got a name. And the name I've got, I give it to you right now. And then he said, rise up and walk. That's a command. That man could have looked at him and said, uh, duh, are you stupid? Are you blind? I can't walk. I've never been able to walk. I've been here this whole time. Been lame from my mother's womb. You notice he didn't say any of that. But now notice, here's the key. Because apparently the man didn't move quick enough. Well, how do we know that? Because of the next verse. It says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. So he, obviously the man wasn't moving quick enough, right? And so he reached down and noticed he took him by the right hand. Why did he do that? We say probably because Peter was right-handed. We well, could have been. You know, nothing says he was or wasn't. Probably was. But if you go back and study the life of Jesus and his ministry, many times he took them by the right hand. All he was doing was doing what he had seen his master do. Why? The one that he was using the name of. Why? Because whenever you use the name of somebody, you have all of the authority and all of the resources behind the, that person's name. So whenever you use the name of Jesus, what is behind that name? Everything. Isn't that right? And so he used that name. Now, <clears throat> in, later on in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there's a gift here that would be in function or be in operation that we would generally call the working of miracles. There's no such thing as a gift of miracles. There is the gift of the working of miracles. Now, why don't we see more of the working of miracles? I'll tell you why. Because you have to work them. And most people don't want to work them. Why? That means they have to do something. Peter said this, and he reaches down and grabs this man and lifts him up. Now, see, that takes boldness. That takes faith, doesn't it? And he reaches, because he could have pulled on this guy and put him back down and pulled him again. Oh, wait, wait, let's try it. And so, but he reached down, he takes him by the hand. And then when he did that, because he used that name, now the spirit was behind that name. And now the spirit is functioning in a gift called the working of miracles. Now, isn't it strange, though, that there's no mention of the working of miracles here? God doesn't even bring it out and go, this is the working of miracles. He didn't do that. Why? Because God did not want us focusing on that gift necessarily. He wanted to focus on the main point, which is what? The name of Jesus. Now, how do we know that? Let's keep looking. Because what, I, like I said, I love what Peter does here because he just destroys so many of our traditions. He says here, <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> in verse 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God.